So now in this video, we're going to look at the push button switch. I've done that in other videos, but in this video, we're going to power the circuit with a lithium iron phosphate battery here, a 12 volt battery, which actually uh, outputs a nominal voltage of 12.8 volts. It actually can be a bit higher than that. We'll talk about that uh, coming up. So in any case, it's a uh, basic switch circuit. The circuit is off when the switch is open. So there's a gap right now. Uh, between the top and the bottom there if I press the button then we bridge that gap and uh, we have a connection now current can flow and in this case the LED can light up so now if I had charged these batteries uh, really recently they would be at about 13.6 volts if I had fully charged them if the charger is attached though and uh, it's uh, charging hasn't turned off then it could be applying 14.6 volts so that's how I'm going to design my circuits for this series where it can handle up to 14.6 volts total so the uh, LED here drops 2 volts that means we might have 12.6 volts across these uh, two resistors right there to limit current and um, so if I just used a 1000 ohm resistor a single one one of these quarter watt ones it would probably get too hot so I have a couple uh, resistors there uh, about half the resistance of a thousand ohms right there they will split up the voltage so as I said before uh, since this drops 2 volts we could expect that 12.6 volts across the two of them which would leave us 6.3 volts across each of them they'll divide that voltage equally um, so they'll get half as hot each one of them versus a single resistor of twice the resistance hopefully that makes sense um, but when the switch is open, of course, no current can flow. There's a gap. You press the button. Sometimes I illustrate this. Uh, it lowers the conductive area between two other conductive areas and bridges the gap. And then current can flow like that. So that 14.6 uh, volts though is with the charger on. 13.6 is what you can expect. If it's recently been charged, it will drift down a little bit um, over time. But uh, you'll still be close to 13.6 if you charged it and haven't used it and um, you want to use it until uh, you get down to about 12 volts that's a good time to recharge it you can recharge it anytime though you can bounce uh, between these two voltage and uh, charge it fully as much as you want doesn't really affect it um, you don't want to drop below 10 volts though so you can go below 12 safely um, but 10 volts you don't want to drop below that but if you really want to uh, make full use of the stored charge um, from completely charged to completely discharged you could go down to 10 volts safely but don't go below that all right so some more stuff I assume you're uh, newer to electronics if you're watching these earlier videos we have the uh, lithium iron phosphate battery there so hopefully it has uh, protection circuitry in it to protect it if we short circuit these uh, two terminals bring uh, negative directly to uh, positive we have a load here. I'm purposely keeping things separated so we don't accidentally make a direct connection between those two points. And uh, hopefully this uh, cheap wire and the poor connections there would limit current, um, but uh, you don't wanna take that chance. So this is a cheap board here. And that's, I meant to actually put that resistor with that one um, because we uh, might lose a connection. So it's actually doing pretty good uh, right there. But these cheap boards, these are thinner wire resistors. It doesn't uh, grab uh, terribly great. So a lot of times if you build a circuit, it looks right, uh, especially on a cheap breadboard. Maybe the component's just not making a con good connection. Even though it's in the slot, you're not guaranteed to have a good connection. So we got the switch there. So positive to the right, that's just because uh, the positive's on the right side of the battery there, negative on the left side. And uh, so I'm only using negative for that rail, only using positive for that rail. Keeping on that side, if we cross it over, we have an increased chance of short circuiting something along the way. And so usually I work positive left towards negative, but here we have the opposite. We are working though positive up, working your way down to negative. That's common as well. Um, so we uh, could move that resistor to uh, that side of the switch, doesn't matter. Bottom two are always connected to each other and uh, the top two of the push button switch are always connected together. Now, one thing about this cheap board is the switch uh, went in really well and it connects really well. Uh, the higher quality boards, they squeeze the 
uh, components more. That's why they make a better connection. Whereas uh, these have these little legs, and you could modify the leg. You can shave it down or whatever and bend it into different shapes. Um, but uh, they're bigger than the leads of these components. So it actually makes a good contact, and um, this isn't squeezing like uh, a higher quality uh, board. And uh, so therefore, it doesn't squeeze the component out once I get it uh, in there. There we go. And um, so uh, basic stuff. But uh, this is a early video in this series, so we got some basic uh, stuff I'm going to cover. So, of course, the long lead of the anode, or the LED, I mean, that's the anode right there. That has to be more positive. Shorter lead, the cathode, that's if you don't trim it, and I'll show you that, is uh, towards the more negative side. If you put it in backwards, it won't light up. That's another thing if... The LED doesn't light up and luckily it went in pretty easy there. Usually it's kind of a struggle. Don't force it in though. Um, keep wiggling it till it slides in pretty easily. Otherwise, these cheap boards, you can uh, damage the metal uh, pretty easily. The higher quality boards, they uh, tend to take abuse better. But uh, in any case, you gotta put it in the right way or it won't light up. But there you can see that uh, we wired this up pretty good. And uh, if we had trouble with those making a connection, that was just me not pushing the switch right. We had trouble with those making connection. I could put that lead in with that one right there so they share a spot. Um, and uh, so they'll push on the metal in there a little more. Plus, they'll be touching each other. So you'd have a better connection. So that's just uh, some of my tips if you're using a cheap board. And uh, of course, we got uh, jumpers there, not just uh, the components. And uh, that's pretty self explanatory there.